Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're continuing work on our Invest Arms Gamer Hawken kit. Full disclosure, I want to say muzzleloaders.com did give me a discount on the kit that we're using in this video, but that is not by any means affecting my commentary about the kit. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments below this video or shoot me an email. I prefer the comments though, uh, if anybody has any questions, especially about this particular aspect, because I can answer them publicly and transparently. Now we can move on to our entry pipe. We really only need to clean up, we don't necessarily need to clean up kind of these faces in here. We're really after this kind of top face as it wraps around. We're going to see if we can grip that here. Just attaching to the entry pipe lugs as they kind of sit. That leather's squishing it out a little bit, so we're going to try just to grab it metal to metal. That's a pretty solid way to grab that part, I think. There we go. Now I'm going to work this with my trusty, pretty worn out half round file here. This gets the job done pretty quick. We have kind of a rough surface established here already from where we uh, were cleaning up the stock and things and mating it. So I know that by using this, I'm not going to remove enough material really to affect how this mates up with the stock. But we will, in going into our final fitting process and sanding, uh, we'll make sure all these match up and we'll actually sand the stock and the hardware in place on a lot of this to make sure we have a nice even fit. Okay, so you'll notice as we get closer here, um, you can see really just right in here, it almost looked like we had a crack in that entry pipe. And depending on where you're getting your castings, whether it's uh, this kind of kit or another kind of kit, uh, or if you're just buying parts to build from a blank, you might see those every now and then. You might be worried that it's a bad part. And I guess in some cases it could be, but in a lot of cases, as you clean up that part, you're going to find that that's just in the surface. And as you clean it up and get down to where you're actually going to be using the part, you're going to find it's going to be fine. So if you see kind of those lines in there, don't worry about it. Clean it up and, uh, and decide then if it's the kind of thing that you need to fix or you need to get replaced. As I'm coming in here, you'll notice as I get into this joint, uh, I'm kind of skipping across this surface with my file. I'm not able to get down in there. Uh, to where this face and this angled face meet. So what I'm going to do before I do a whole lot more, I'm going to get out my book. This is the Hawk and Rifle. It's Revolution from 1822 to 1870 by Bob Woodfill. Um, really great book on Hawkins, but we're using, I believe it's this one. Yeah, since this is the Gemmer Hawkin kit, we're using kind of this Gemmer uh, original as, as a reference. Trying to get um, a little bit more detail on the entry pipe, the entry thimble, as it's called here. So you can see that this is round as we go in, but we do have a wedding band here in between these surfaces. And you can, you can theorize, um, but when it comes to some of these things, it's nice or it's easier to put that wedding band there than it is to attempt to make this smooth all the way across because you have limitations of your files of the maker and of the just the physics of the shape of the part. This is kind of what I suspected. I suspected we might have a wedding band there um, to mate these two surfaces. So we're going to see what we can do um, with that in mind here to maybe put one of those in and see where we can go from there. You'll see at the end as well we have a wedding band in there as two. This one comes cast with a wedding band there. It's a little thin, I would say, um, but we can work this to make it a little more, uh, a little more traditional, a little more natural. So I'm setting that book to the side with it open to that page so I can reference this as I am, as I'm working. Wedding bands are, are kind of complicated, but, um, and I'll admit I'm a little nervous to put one on here, but we can do it. And uh, we're gonna try to show you how to do that real quick. Now I learned this from Mike Brooks and Wayne Estes. There's a video on the NMLRA YouTube channel um, that has some more details about this. You can see some real professionals showing you how to do this. 
got to move you, little guy. Sorry. So I've got a hacksaw here, and we're going to start with our hacksaw, and we're going to make establishing cuts with our hacksaw to establish each side of the band. I like to go slow and make sure that I've got a good straight line going. You'll notice I'm just going in the direction as the blade cuts. Okay, so I'm kind of starting at this angle. And once I have that established, I start to bring the blade around. And we're using that first cut to inform as we bring, as we go around. So there you can see my line. We're just working on bringing that around. And I am running into my vise a little bit. So I'm going to shift this over to the side here. Now you could be worried that I'm out here in space a little bit, but I'm not putting enough pressure on this to knock that around or anything with the saw. So I've just got it clamped on one of the pins or the lugs on the bottom. I'm just going to carefully bring that around. My goal is to take that around far enough that the line drops off into where the thimble or the pipe is hidden by the stock. So it has the illusion that the wedding band goes all the way around. So we're going to continue that cut down into the flat face. Looks pretty good. I'm going to come back over here. We're going to do the same on this side. And you want to be careful because your, your saw is designed to go through metal like this, so don't make it too deep. We're going to use the file a bit. To, to clean this up and deepen that up some. And looking at our reference picture, the front end of our thimble here is, is a bit shorter than, um, I guess, in length between the wedding bands here. So instead of starting my next band back here, uh, kind of in the face up here, I'm gonna bring it up here into the actual thimble area. And we're just gonna do the same thing with our hacksaw just, you know, a sixteenth of an inch, if that really, apart from that first cut. Now this gets hairy because you want it to be straight. So you want to make sure that you're <laughs> in line and you've got, it, uh, you've got it right. Because if it's a little wonky, you can clean it up with the file, but um, it helps if you don't have to. And when I get this started, I'm really only starting about a quarter of an inch with my cut. And that's what I'm using to establish before I move on and start shifting the angle of my saw to go around. Because once I have that quarter inch or so, I can keep my saw in line as I'm going around.
There you can see where I've come around on this side with those cuts. Get them pretty even. Uh, this should be back in the stock a bit, I believe. Yeah, and we can extend that with a file if we need to. There you can see kind of those top curves there as those come around. Not perfectly parallel, but pretty good, I think. That's probably my best wedding band yet. And we come around here, got the same face, and uh, take the cuts into this flat face to give that illusion that they're going all the way around. So now we can chuck this back up in our vise and we can start working that band. To further polish up and clean up this wedding band, I'm gonna use a pretty fine triangular file here. This is a Habilis Swiss made triangular file number one um, for you folks at home. Uh, it's a nice sharp file, it's got some dings on it, but that's fine for what we're doing. You could also just use the edge of your half round coming in here very easily. And come in here and clean that up. And you know, in fact, I might just use this half round. Looking at it here. Okay, that works out. When I look at our reference here, uh, it's just a picture. It's not three-dimensional, but we can kind of tell. What, you, what I'm going to point out here is you can see that the wedding band is a bit taller. It's a bit more proud than the other kind of flatter round surfaces here. So our wedding band needs to be a little taller in surface height than, uh, at, than the, the area here in the pipe and here at the base of the pipe. Now we can kind of fake that by gradually taking down the surface of the pipe and on this side here coming into that wedding band, kind of you know like a kid would draw a bird. We can bring that surface in. Maybe it would help if I... I drew it out for you. Let's say that's our band. We know that this was all the same surface height before we've carved in here. We can bring and we can kind of file up to our band at an angle to kind of sell that idea that the wedding band, it'll kind of fake it into being or looking a little bit taller. Now, if you're working from a cast part, you know, from like the Hawkins shop or something, you could probably have enough material to come in and actually make it more proud. You know, coming in even, you know, this is all exaggerated, but you could come in much further. But um, I don't know that we need to do that on this part or that we have the space to do that. Um, so I'm gonna show you kind of the simple way to, to make that work. And that's just, I'm coming in with my file. My flat face is contacting the thimble here and I'm just taking that down at a nice even angle. You'll notice I'm locking the flat edge of my file up against that band. And that's creating an even cut surface on this side over here. You, you can see a little bit of that difference. We're starting to bevel this edge here as it goes into the pipe. We can make that angle more extreme as we need to, to further accent the height uh, of the actual band itself. So on this initial cut, I have a pretty extreme angle on there. But as I'm working this, I'll bring that angle down. And that'll bring my bevel farther forward on the pipe removing more and more material but also not making the change between this surface height and this surface height of the band as extreme. Kind of selling that illusion of, of difference in, um, in height and surface level. Now you don't want to go through your pipe so don't um, don't go hogging in here. You're already down into that, that pipe a bit from your cut. So that's why I like to step that angle back. And bring it out into the pipe more.
this is again is really good filing practice I think so I can come in here and blend that out a little bit if I start to get some edges I don't like now you can start to see that's already breaking up this surface change making that a little bit easier to stomach on our eyes and I know this probably seems like a bunch of extra work but if you go through and try to blend those you're gonna create at least one half of a wedding band as you're doing it to create a line between those two surfaces and trying to come in here and make it flow evenly into that it's gonna it's gonna be a pain you're gonna need a lot of little files to come in there and get that right so um, you know you may have skipped forward you might be or uh, we're seeing this and thinking it's a lot more work, but I really think that dropping a band in here, while not necessary, really does help. And what we want to do with this band, as we're filing, we want to get rid of those saw marks. We don't want it to be visible that we had a saw cutting through that thimble. For example, you can see here, we have a nice edge. It isn't really broken up coming as this face comes into our band. And as we get over here to this side where we haven't worked, you can see a little bit of light reflecting off of the side here where we still have some saw marks where we haven't fully blended that. And that's what we want to come in here and we want to blend that right out because we don't want that showing up on our kit. That looks a little too mechanical, a little too straight for us. Uh, it, doesn't look, it doesn't look like it fits the part. So we'll come in here and kind of match that up a little bit. Not too much though. I want to get the other side taken care of before I come in here and, and try to balance anything out because we might not need to. We'll see. This is where having a, a triangular file with a safe side um, would be really useful, like a dovetail file so, or a site file uh, for working on sites, because that safe side would keep you from removing too much material on that safe side. So that's something to consider if you want to build more. You can hear that file get a little gravelly. That's when I know it's time to clean it out. Okay. I think we're looking pretty good there now. Come down here just a little bit more. Clean that up a little bit more with some sandpaper. Now we want to do that same thing here on the other side. So I switched this around. It makes it a little more comfortable, but it allows me to work from the wedding band away instead of into my wedding band, um, so that I'm I'm coming or I'm pushing material away rather than pushing into the band. That might be something that you want to do as well. I think it makes it a bit more comfortable working. So just like the other side, we're kind of removing those saw marks. Because this side is already at an angle as this face comes down and in. It's a little bit easier, I think. I'm just matching my file to that face, that angle. That kind of creates a nice even surface very easily. And I say easily because it's different because this face here is at a different level than this face was. So we're at a different level to our band and uh, unlike over here where we're working at the same level.
now we want to round this up a little bit if we can, which is tricky. So I'm gonna try to chamfer this edge a little bit. As we get to this point, you know, it comes down to personal taste as, to far, as far as how far you want to take this. Right now, I'm going to focus on uh, evening up this surface here. So after clean or, or lining up or, or working this area between the band and this face uh, here and here, I have a little bit of a bump right here where I've marked in Sharpie, just where these faces are different in height. And that's just something I like to go through and even up. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. There's just a little bit that we need to clean up. Going around there. Just further blending this face with this face and this face with this face. Um, you know, I think on my traditions kit, I, I don't think I did a whole lot of this. Um, but I can take that one step a little further. Another thing you can do is you can come in here and, and round up this band a little bit. And what I'm going to do is just chamfer each side a little bit so that it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit curved. We're not going to be able to get it all the way around. I don't think, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm that skilled with such uh, limited material here. And I don't want to risk flattening that out and, and ruining it. So we're going to do a little bit of cleanup there. Um, what I'm going to do a lot of this with is this fine flat file because each of its narrow sides here, you can see, don't have any teeth. So this is a safe sided file, although the sides are a little bit a um, little bit narrow. That's nice for working in here. I don't I'm not worried about then uh, further thinning my band and I have a nice wide flat surface that makes it easy to clean up and blend these areas. This is a Simons made in the USA file. It's a one test uh, for those of you at home. But uh, any flat file would do. Um, and if you don't have a safe sided flat file and you just have your normal flat file, you can put just some masking tape along a side like here. And, uh, and that pretty much turns it into a safe file. You want to be careful that you're not wearing through that tape at any point, but that will generally protect a lot of, of what you're working on. So I'm coming in here, my strokes starting at the band, working their way up that face until we get rid of that bump. So then we're going to do the same thing on this other side. At this point now, I'm pretty happy with these surfaces as we come into this wedding band. Uh, we're kind of to the point, I think, where cleaning this up further is going to be sandpaper and what we have next is to further clean up this band out here towards the muzzle end but first i want to chamfer the edges of our self-made band here and it's a little funky uh, i'll admit looking at it but i had fun putting it in and i hope that it helps inform you a little bit on how to put one of those in. Again, there's a ton of great resources out there. Uh, definitely check out like the tutorials page on the American Long Rifles Forum. That uh, will give you some great insight from dedicated, experienced, wonderful builders out there. I'm gonna use this same fine flat file with my safe sides here. Again, you can make your own. You can either grind uh, you know, the teeth off of a side or you can use masking or painter's tape on a side to create a safe side. Uh, you'll see a lot of the ends of my files. I have made them into a safe end with a couple uh, strips of painter's tape there. That's all I'm talking about. Dirt simple, and it gets you uh, some extra utility out of your file for next to no cost. I'm going to use this with that safe side down against our ramrod pipe, and I'm going to hit this at an angle, hit the wedding band at an angle with that face. 
Maybe I can illustrate this a little bit better for you. So if you're looking at it from the file, or, or as the file, I guess, would look at it, we're coming in like this. So this face, this cutting surface of our file, we're going to come in at an angle like this. So our safe side is down. It's not going to be removing any material down here, but we're going to remove a little bit of that edge and that corner on our band. And uh, that's going to help us sell it being a little bit more round, you know, uh, in the vertical axis rather than flat. Make, a little, make it look a little more ornate, we'll say. See there, you can see we got a nice little edge going. I'm going to turn my file up a little bit more, a little bit more of an extreme angle, and we're going to follow that edge all the way around. See that just a little bit? We've got an extra light, or we got an extra face reflecting some light there. We're going to do the same thing on this other side. If you're still out there shopping around for tools, um, you know, this is something I like about a simple vise like this one, is I can unchuck and chuck this part in and out pretty quickly, switch it around so that I know I'm working comfortably. I want to be able to see as much of the part as I can when I'm doing something like this and making it easy to switch it around so I can see it, just removes another barrier so that I can do the best job that I can. So now I can come across very gently. And I can knock those, up, those new corners down. As I'm just following this around, We can start to round that out some. We just want to be nice and gentle. And not, not skip the file like that. Okay. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> you, might, uh, you might think, golly, Ethan, that's pretty horrible. Or you might think, hey, that's not too bad. I'm, uh, the jury's still out for me <laughs> on how I feel about it. But, uh, you know, we put a wedding band in there. And if I can, I can kind of do it, then I think you can do it too. So I'm going to back this part up in my vise just a hair and uh, I'm going to show you how to clean up the wedding band that comes cast into this entry thimble here. We're going to just use a lot of the same principles. I really should have done this first and then this I suppose uh, to show you the beginner and the advanced. Um, but we're going to use the same, the same kind of practice here. You can use a half round file with a nice edge on it. Or you can use a fine flat file with an edge, nice straight edge on it. Again, I'm going to use this safe side. Like I've said, you can put some tape on it or grind uh, a normal flat file with teeth on a side down and, and use it. So this, wet, this band out here is super thin. Um, I really wouldn't mind if we had double that thickness, but, uh, but we don't. And that's okay. Uh, so we're just going to come in here and we're going to take down this edge. Like I, I kind of wish, <laughs> I guess, that the, the thickness of the metal band out here was as thick as the cut to establish it is. I wish these thicknesses had switched. But we'll, we will make it work. making sure to put the safe side of my file so that it's catching up against our rib out here. That will help keep us even all the way around. 
Now that I've got this cleaned up as we go out into this forward band here, I'm gonna do just a little bit of what we did back here and just chamfer the edge a little bit. It's gonna make it look like we're taking down width off of the entire pipe, but really only gonna take off some of about half of that radius as it comes around. Um, just to clean this up, get rid of some of those burrs and, uh, and harsh lines that we have there. To do that, I'm just taking this flat file and just running it around the edge just like that. As I finish this part up and I look at what we've done so far, as kind of a recap, we have our entry pipe and thimble, we have our butt plate, and we have our nose cap here. Each of these pieces has taken me about an hour of time, uh, maybe a little bit more on our nose cap because of all the complex curves there, but I would estimate right around an hour to get these from the rough cast to where I'm happy with them in a filed state. Um, you know, some of you might not go as far as I have on some of these pieces, and some of you will go farther. But that's kind of the ballpark to let you know how I'm doing this, or how long it's taking me to do some of these parts. Uh, what we have left right now, we have our trigger guard, we have our barrel tang, we have our toe plate, we have our sights, we have our trigger plate and we also have our barrel and our barrel tenon plates. Now, because we've already matched those to the stock and filed those really, they're pretty much ready, I think, for sandpaper. These are the other small pieces that we have left. So I'm gonna start on our trigger guard because I think it's one of the last pieces that is complex enough to, to show you the entire process of it. The toe plate is nice and flat. The barrel tang is nice and flat. And we might, I might show you how I'm taking the sights apart and the, and the trigger to, to come apart. But I think the trigger guard here is an important piece to show you. 